Hey, and welcome to Other Realm Studio. I'm Paula, and this is a project that I'm doing for Jeremy Lott. This is a children's book. I, as you can see, I've got at least a little something on all the pages, so I just need to pick one and have at it, really. Um, let's see. This one's just blocked in. Uh, I know that there's a lot of work to do with hair and eyes and a lot of fur to sketch in. So let's start here. So what I'm going to have here is our Our main character here, Growly Locks, is getting sleepy. So you can see she's already she's already sketched in. I was pretty happy with the sketch. And then here's the little girl in the background. But she will go on a separate layer. So I don't have very much time to paint tonight. So I'm going to hammer this one out as quickly as I can. So, uh, somebody needs to shut a door back there. Oh well. This will be an imperfect stream. But, on the other hand, at least we will get things done. So let's see, I think I left, yeah, I think I had her arms just a little long. I'm going to do a few minor corrections to the anatomy. So... What I like to do is do the sketch and get things pretty much shaped in and then I block it in with the main color. Let's see. With the main blocks of color in. And then I come back to it in a few days so I can see where my initial mistakes are. Because, you know, it's not always possible to catch all your mistakes as you make them. So I come in and edit. Hello, girls rule 70,001. How you doing? Ruling, I hope. Uh, pretty good. It's just, you know, it's hard to get time to do anything. That's good. I appreciate having your company. So, let's see. I'm... My program here is Clip Studio Paint EX. I'm using a Wacom uh, Intuos. Um, a lot of people don't really like this sort of setup. 
because it requires looking at the screen while not paying attention to what your hands, well, you're still paying attention to what your hand's doing, but you can't really watch yourself as you draw. No, I got, hang on. I have a pressure sensitive pen that came with the Wacom. So, um, yeah, pressure sensitivity though, it's fantastic. Yeah, I do a few things with the mouse, like if I want to do, if I want to create a perfect circle, I can use the graphic pen tool over here and uh, just click and the mouse will give me a perfect uh, a perfect circle every time oh cool what you getting yeah I just um, I just got the uh, Galaxy Tab uh, S6 Lite. Six, isn't it? Yeah, I can't really keep numbers in my head very well. And uh, it's fantastic so far. And it comes with the S Pen, which is very similar to this. And that, I can actually use my tablet and draw on it. Ah, oh, thank you, sweetie. Um, so I'm trying to get back into doing these streams more regularly. But I nearly missed tonight. Okay, let's see. Might have some of my angles slightly off on this one. I'll just keep refining it until it works. Yeah, they're fun. Bears are super fun. But I really like drawing all kinds of animals. This one is a commission that I have for a children's book called Growly Locks and the Three Humans. It's, it's pretty fun. Growly Locks is having a fabulous time. Yeah, I always try to push what I'm capable of. Sometimes it gets me in trouble, but I wouldn't be where I am today if I never tried. So yeah, I look at it as an editing process. Every iteration gets me closer to what it needs to look like. Uh, no, I'm freelance. So I, I make comics and I was making cosplay accessories and selling them at Comic Cons, but we have been a little short on Comic Cons this year for, you know, whatever reason. Go for both. 
biochemistry is cool. Yeah, I never, I never really got to study very much. But, you know, every time I see something neat in the news, I, I uh, stop by. Yeah, like the processes for bioluminescence. That's cool. Yeah, usually... Usually the main use of something like an art major is that it forces you to practice. Now, I majored in art for a little while, but the college did not work out. Um, and then later I went back to college and I got a degree in English. And it was kind of the same thing in English. The main value of the degree is in all the practice that you get. And you know, a little bit about the teachers. It's, it's nice to see people every now and then. But yeah, the thing is when you're, when you're being trained in art, you're training your eye and you're training your hand. And you're learning to use a lot of different materials. So that's also fun. I mean, I did get a lot of exposure to a lot of different materials. When I was an art major. But after I switched to English, I got to go to an elective art class and I learned even more there. In just one single elective uh, summer class. So that's where I learned uh, calligraphy pens, like the crow quill pen, and uh, a lot about sketching. That'll get you really far, actually. Sketching properly. You know, with good technique. Oh, yeah. Me too. Yeah, I, I dabble in a lot of different media. But I, uh, I wrote song lyrics and my friend Kristen, uh, she's a composer and a musician. And she uh, composed the music to go with my lyrics that goes with my comic. So I just keep on folding in more and more uh, hang on. more and more media into my stories. I just want to tell them to be such an immersive experience so that it feels like it's a real world and that it's a place where you could where you want to visit. You could almost be there for a while. Oh, yeah. Yeah, just a couple years ago, we had... Uh, we had terrible internet out here. And uh, then, you know, we've got this small rural phone company. And they decided to make the leap and put in fiber optic. And it has been fantastic. I am so excited because now our uh, our internet doesn't drop and 
it doesn't do like the the clicky poppy thing and um we don't lose stuff all the time like uh my nephew is you know he he was a really good gamer and he would be he would be streaming and he would be you know doing really fantastic and then uh internet would just cut out on him and it was so slow and you know now he's moved but now we get the the high speed fiber optic cable okay So yeah, I think that studying on my own, I could learn as much about art, but I would have to be very disciplined. And, you know, be very accountable to myself or to somebody, goodness, to make sure that I do all the work and I turn it in somehow and get some kind of feedback from somewhere. So if you have if you have to put it off for any reason, it's not the end of the world. You always get better. Um, the more you practice, it's like ninety nine percent practice. But the good thing about college is that it does make you practice faster. See, right now, I wouldn't want to go to a college. I mean, even if I wasn't already busy with everything else, because, you know, they're not, they're not open for in-person classes, and it's, uh, you might as well get your lessons off YouTube for that. Sometimes, sometimes you get an advisor who is less than honest. So that was the reason that my first college didn't really work out for me. They tell you stuff so that you'll sign up. And then, you know, it, uh, it won't work the way you were told. Like, there were classes that were supposed to transfer and stuff. And a lot of other little issues. And I just... As soon as I... As soon as it dawned on me that the advisor, who I would be stuck seeing, because he was also a teacher for several of my classes, as soon as it dawned on me that that guy had no integrity, I couldn't stand to look at him anymore. So, yeah, no more of that college for me. But the second college where I got my English degree, the advisor was really nice. And I just made sure that I set my own schedule. And then I had him check it over. And that way, he couldn't make any mistakes. But I don't think I had to be that careful with him. He was actually a pretty honest guy.
Let's see. About got all the texture done on Growly Locks's head. You know, there's probably a brush I could make for this, but I haven't really made any brushes. So, not today. So this is going to have to be a pretty quick stream. Uh, normally I would try to get on here from about 7.30 or 8 o'clock at the latest. I keep leaning forward into my screen. I keep forgetting that I can just make the screen bigger if I need to. Um, right, so this is a little bit late for me, so I'm going to have to stop at 930. Thank you. So, all I need to do is finish, finish out, finish out the texture, and then I go over that with the, uh, with the watercolor blending tip, so that it doesn't look quite so harsh. And then when the page is done, I go over it with, uh, I add another layer, um, an overlay layer for the uh, light source. And a multiply layer for shadows. So it's it's important to have a good foundation. And to practice a lot, even if you're not practicing in a digital media and you're sure that what you want to do is all digital and not uh, traditional medias, you should still do a lot of practicing with regular pencil and paper. I'm terribly out of practice myself, so I need to work on that uh, later. Because it is easy to get a little spoiled. So yeah, if you if you learn the basics with limited tools, then you'll be more effective when you have something a little more elaborate to play with. So, you know, you learn, you learn the basics of anatomy, you learn how to do quick sketching from life, um, you pick up a little bit about cartooning. and expressions. You think about um, 
the bone structure, the musculature of the face. And you see how far you can push expressions while leaving them still believable and expressive. And you learn what makes a pleasing shape, what, what kind of connotations each shape has. Um, so that you can bring across a lot of emotion in your drawings. Ultimately, art is for the purpose of communicating. And if it's not communicating anything, then it's failed. But... That still leaves you a lot of leeway. So with doing the art for growly locks, one of the things that I'm trying to do is tell more story than is in the actual book, or well, in the text. You know, anytime you're doing an illustrated text, whether it's a children's book or a comic, you have you, know, you have twice the potential than you would with something like a novel. I mean, on one hand, with a novel, you get more theater of the mind from your readers as they finish your work by reading it and visualizing it. But on the other hand, you can tell a You can tell more of the story or a parallel story when you're illustrating. So one of the one of my pet peeves on some comic writing is that it's like a wall of text all over the whole thing and it's plastered all over the art and if they were going to put that much text in, why didn't they just write a novel? I mean, I, I feel bad for the artist having their work, you know, obscured like that. Like, why do they even bother? And so that's a sign of... Well, I think, I think that's a sign of a writer that doesn't trust the artist. And if the writer doesn't trust the artist, then they're going to want to explain everything and have it all in the writing. Well, that's not how a visual media like comics or children's books, that's not how that works. It doesn't make a good comic when there are too many words in it. You, know, you can have your dialogue, you can have your sound effects, you can even have a narrator box. 
but you really have to edit it and pare it down and show. Don't tell. So, in order to do that, you need to allow your character's space to act. You know, to have an action, to show emotion, to do things. You need to leave room for Um, you need to leave room for your setting. You know, not it's not just landscape; it's a setting. It needs to give your work. It needs to give the story its atmosphere, so that needs to be there, and it needs to breathe, and it needs to give your reader a place to put the story that you're telling. I mean, it doesn't have to be a whole lot, but, you know, it should exist and it shouldn't be covered up with dialogue bubbles or balloons. Thoughts are bubbles. Dialogue is balloons. Yep, I'm going to have to go soon. Well, that's not very much to have gotten done with one art stream. All I've done is put some hair on a bear. And let's see how fast I can go. So, let's see. I don't know if I'll be back on tomorrow night. But I think I will be spending a lot of time painting this weekend. So, check and see if I've made it back Friday, Saturday, maybe even Sunday. I'll try and log on by 7.30 to 8 p.m. Eastern Time. And I keep sliding off. The, I keep sliding out of view here. Um, and I will try not to stay up too late. Because that will mess with my painting in the morning. So, let's see. What do I need to be sure to mention? So yeah, I try not to stay up too late and I will be back. If not tomorrow or the day after, then Friday, Saturday, and Sunday this week. I'm sorry my schedule's all messed up. That's that's just how we live now. 
This is our life. Bizarro schedules that make no sense. But we keep plugging on. All right, so I'm just about done with the texturing on this side, and I kind of hate leaving, you know, like two and a half paws undone. But I'm not staying up any later than this. I can't do it. Alright, so if you would like to see my other work, you can visit otherrealmstudio.com and you can see my portfolio and my comic Soulbound, which is about a college student who is flung through a portal to another world of magic, myth, and monsters. And she must find her way back home before her soul comes wandering back without the rest of her. And I also have a solo project that I'll be doing um, eventually. It's called Asha, and it is about a feral jungle queen on a hostile alien planet. With a mysterious secret. And there's also, you know space pirates and a mutiny and fun stuff like that but first i need to finish a bear book so that's what i'll be working on uh this weekend okay Thank you for keeping me company. And thank you, Polar Bear Joe. And I'll see you in the other realm. Good night.